Well, hey there, guys. It's your favorite backyard geographer again. I was out in the garage going through my junk, and I thought of you. You know, between the Pliocene and the Pleistocene, the California we know and love today would have been very different. During the time span of about 2.5 million years, California would have had some incredible critters and some incredible climate to match. We are so fortunate to have such a rich fossil history, most of which is found not that far from downtown LA. Join me today as I talk about one of my favorite California megafauna, the Smilodon. So as we know, California has a state flower, bird, song, mineral, and even a fossil. Ours is the Smilodon. You may know it as a saber-toothed cat, but we now know that it's not closely related to either tigers or the modern-day cat. But in 1942, the name saber-toothed cat was given to a fossil found in Brazil, and the name stuck ever since. Why? Because check out these protruding canines. <laughs> anyway, as mentioned earlier, hundreds of Smilodons have been recovered from the La Brea Tar Pits in Los Angeles, and they have the world's largest collection of them as well. Worldwide, we have discovered three Smilodon species, all of which are of different sizes. You have the Populator, which was the largest found in South America, uh, the Fatalis, which is, was found in Canada and California, which is a fossil that I have here, and the Gracilis, which was found in South America, which was the smallest of the three species. Now, let's talk about the La Brea Tar Pits one more time. The tar pits visible now were all created by human excavators. The lake pit was originally an asphalt mine and the other visible pits were produced as a result of explorers excavating more than a hundred sites between 1913 and 1915, all in search of large mammal bones. The seepage has been happening for tens of thousands of years during which the asphalt sometimes formed a deposit thick enough to trap animals. The deposits would become covered over with water, dust, or even leaves, and animals would wander in, becoming trapped and eventually dying. Predators would enter to eat the trapped animals, and they would also become stuck. And as the bones of the dead animals would sink, the asphalt would soak into them, turning them into this dark brown or black in color you know, fossil that I have here. Now, the Native American Chumash and Tongva people living in the area at that time built boats unlike any others in North America prior to contact by settlers, pooling fallen Northern California redwood trunks and pieces of driftwood from the Santa Barbara Channel. Their ancestors formed to seal the cracks between the boards of these large wooden plank canoes by using the natural resources of tar. This innovative form of transportation allowed access up and down the coastline and the Channel Islands. Now, back in 1913, when George Allen Hancock, the owner of Rancho La Brea, granted the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County exclusive excavation rights at the tar pits for only two years. But in those two years, the museum was able to extract 750,000 specimens at 96 different sites, guaranteeing that a large collection of fossils would remain consolidated and available to the community. Well, then in 1924, Hancock would donate the 23 acres to Los Angeles County with the stipulation that the county would protect and preserve the park and exhibit all the fossils found there. So let's now talk about my guy that I got right here. So this is not a real skull, I'm sorry to disappoint, but this is a very, very high detailed replica of an actual skull that was on loan from the La Brea Tar Pits to a company called uh, Bone Clones. They're based out of California, and what they do is they create these beautiful pieces of, of art uh, by utilizing the original fossils themselves, and then they create the mold. It's a very long, detailed process, and then they use airbrush and, and really fantastic artistry to create these exact color landscapes and pieces to these you know, pieces of art. And in fact, they actually have a full size one. Uh, this is just the skull, which is perfect for my classes that I like to share. But again, I mean, just, I don't know, from your perception as well, I mean, the teeth, I mean, everything looks so real and that's the, the genuine detail that is put into uh, recreating something like this. Well, maybe you didn't know that the saber-toothed cat was called a Smilodon. Maybe you didn't even know that we had a state fossil. You know, be sure to like this video, comment below, and hey, and if you've been to the La Brea Tar Pits, let me know how it's been. It's been a long time since I visited. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll talk soon. Bye.
Howdy, 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 howdy. <laughs> I didn't say it fast enough, but <laughs> you know when you came out of the box? Howdy, 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 Woody. <laughs>